In this great American city, flowing with enormous wealth and natural beauty, there is a drug crisis exploding on its streets. Don't come to downtown. Here on 3rd Avenue against the backdrop of Pike Place Market in Seattle's downtown core, the addicts smoke and inject all kinds of substances in plain sight. Just that. Right now, the drug of choice is fentanyl, often sold as pills called blues. Aaron Smith shows me how he inhales with a hollowed out pen. Today it's three for ten dollars. Tomorrow it could be even cheaper. It relaxes your body, relaxes your mind, it makes you feel just a little like comfortable. It helps you give you comfortable out here in all these tough conditions. And the dealers prey on these lost souls. Does anyone know who he is? Fentanyl overdose deaths in King County are surging this year and now on a record pace. Health officials say it's also one of the main reasons why so many homeless people are dying on the streets. Talk to the fire chief in Seattle who told me a few months ago they respond to four overdoses every day. Since June, the Seattle Fire Department responded nearly 200 times to this stretch of 3rd Avenue between Union and Pine Street. Again, most of it related to drugs. There he is. I just want to walk in there and find him, though. This woman wants to remain anonymous as she desperately searches for her son. You guys know this kid, this guy Jordan? He's my son. Suspected of using heroin on 3rd Ave. Are you just saddened to think your son yeah. could be involved? I'm saddened for all of them. Many addicts also admit to stealing from nearby businesses to fuel their habit. You got any LV or Hermes? Gucci? They bring it all back to 3rd Avenue to sell for pennies on the dollar. Ooh, $20, $20. Clothing beer, paper towels, anything for a quick buck to buy even more pills. And this ecosystem is spilling onto nearby streets. Earlier this year, Amazon exited the Bon Marche building, citing safety concerns in the neighborhood. The tech giant recently closed down its nearby Go store on 4th Avenue for the same reasons. I'm from the Bay Area, San Francisco, and we see a lot out there, but nothing like this. A block away in Westlake Center, the iconic Starbucks also shut down, saying workers no longer felt safe in the area. And Parashki Parashki says its downtown location will remain closed indefinitely. There's open air drug use going on. It's taking it's over the park. the park. It's not in the park though, so we don't have any we don't have any jurisdiction. Westlake Park at night is also turning into an open air drug den. Users continue to smoke up in doorways and leave trash all over the ground. Open air. Just open air. Yeah. And they wow. know the cops can't do nothing. The data is grim. Because they don't care. It's blatant. But allowing the human toll to continue is unconscionable to community advocate Rick Hearns. Clean. Okay. I, I, like, I know you still look good. That's why he's out here, pleading with these men and women to get help. I think it's going to take some more depths. I hate to say it, it will take some tragedy to make some changes. Some nonprofits and local ministries like REACH have also attempted to intervene. Safety is my, as mayor, my core charter responsibility. So has Mayor Bruce Harrell. In March, he cleared all of this on 3rd Ave after several shootings and the death of a teenager. Seattle police added more patrols. The mayor even temporarily closed down the bus stop at 3rd and Pine to slow down the flow of illegal activity. It seemed to be working, at times looking completely clear. But now, it's come roaring back. Some say it never truly went away. The Herald administration has not responded to my request for comment on these new concerns. It's become attractive to others, that's why it's grown. Jim Feuda with Crime Stoppers Puget Sound says criminals and addicts know SPD is down hundreds of officers. They're doing what they can with what they have. <laughs> While arrests are still happening out here, it's unclear how often SPD plans to go after people doing drugs in the open. So you were seen using drugs, therefore committing a misdemeanor. When you failed to stop and listen to them when you ran, no, you no. committed, committed obstruction. Uh -huh. Feuda believes there will likely be limited prosecution of misdemeanors like petty theft and drug use, even though City Attorney Ann Davison said she wanted to go after repeat offenders. We asked Davison how many theft and drug cases she's charged since taking office earlier this year. We're still waiting for her to get back to us. Like you said, the revolving door, if it's, if it's, if it's not a uh, uh, crimes against person, a violent crime, they're you know, back on the street. He says until this changes, the cycle of lawlessness in Seattle will continue. I mean, do you see the officer literally right next to you? They're just passing by, right? Yeah, but they don't, they're not going to do anything. 
On any given night, 3rd Ave and Pine now feels more like a block party. You got it all backwards! This man probably walks around in his underwear. Let me know if you need pants. I can get you some pants. That's why the cops keep coming because of him. While a group of guys drink beers on a couch they just brought in. You got any more Coronas left? We look better yeah, we'll The black market is thriving. It's almost uh, like the Wild West. And musicians now add to this eclectic mix of illegal activity. Oh, whoa. Tourists remain oblivious until they walk right into this mess. I mean, there's people passed out on the sidewalks, people geeking out. Weiler only wants me to use his first name and is visiting from Boston for the summer, but says it will be his final trip to the Emerald City. After seeing everything that you're seeing now here on 3rd Avenue, would you come back to Seattle? No, never. I would never come back there. 